Hey everyone, today I'll be talking about this paper visualizing and understanding Atari agents. This was published in 2018. This paper is by Sam Gray Danis, Anurag Kaul, Jonathan Dodge and Alan Ford. A major problem in reinforcement learning is how do you understand the behavior of these agents? One way is to understand the trajectories of these agents, but that is still not sufficient to understand why exactly the agent took a certain action. For example, if this is a domain and this is a grid world domain and my agent is starting from this point and is supposed to reach the top right corner here, then there could be multiple ways in which the agent can reach this goal, right? But why exactly would the agent choose a specific path might not be that clear, right? Because technically a path is preferred over some other path based on the expected discounted reward or the expected average reward which is given by something some equation like this but that's too technical for non-expert users who do not have a very good understanding of these kinds of details right so this paper is trying to solve this problem where we can convey the reasonings behind why an agent took its action took a certain action to a non-expert user. In particular, this paper focuses on saliency maps. One can understand what a saliency map is by looking at, okay, if this is an image observation that we have, then we would try to generate something like a heat map where we'll say, okay, this region in blue and maybe here is very important for the agent to decide its action. A more concrete example could be, let's say if we are on a road and this is our car and there is a traffic signal here, right? And the car has a camera at the top and it's looking at the scene like this. Now, if it has to make a decision of whether to drive forward or stop, right? Let's say these are the two actions. There could be multiple ways in which you could explain what, what was it that the agent saw in order to take a certain action. This paper, in essence, would say, okay, we'll draw this region here and say, and, and a heat map over this region would in fact mean that the agent is trying to focus on this region in order to make its decision of stop if the red light if there is a light which is red or to drive ahead if there is a green light. So as the paper points out, there have been different approaches to this. For example, t -SNEE and Jacobian saliency maps and reward curves. But there are several problems with these. For example, with t -SNEE is a black box method, Jacobian saliency maps, which they kind of compare to, do not have quote unquote interpretable perturbations. So what, what it means here is that in Jacobian saliency map, it could be the case that the output is some random regions which have no physical interpretation by a non-expert. So even if I highlight these random regions and maybe the agent is in fact focusing on these regions in order to yield its decision, we cannot comment upon the reasons of the agent because there is no physical meaning attached to this. Whereas if on the other hand, these regions were to have a physical interpretation, for example, in our case, there is a traffic signal or maybe the stop sign or things like that, then it is much more interpretable to comment upon whether or not the agent is making its decisions for the right reason. So coming on this topic, the contributions of this paper as, are given here. So they try to identify the strategies of the agent using their, using their method. Then they try to visualize throughout training how the policies are evolved. So how the strategy is evolving over time. Next, they'll try to check for reward hacking. So whether the agent is trying to exploit certain facts of the image observation, which shouldn't have been the case, but it so happens that in the design, it is finding some cheat codes in the image and it is following that. For example, let's say 
here is my image observation and again my car and this is my traffic signal and then this is my car here and I'm trying to visualize this scene. Let's say in this image, ob image observation at the top left corner, I'll just give you, give the agent the correct action. I'll draw an arrow, left, right, pause, up, down. Let's say all of these actions, I'll just draw right away, right? In this case, right, the agent does not really need to interpret the observation in order to choose the best action. It can just look at the top left corner and decide, just copy the given action. But that would be cheating because what we require the agent to do is use the correct means in order to choose the correct action, right? So agent should in fact be focusing on these traffic signals and stop signals and those other kind of things instead of looking at these signals or hints that are there in the image observation. And finally, all of their experiments have been done on Atari games where the agents are typically performing really bad and what they want to do is try to figure out why is it the case that this is happening. Now just to get back to what the aim of this paper is, we have an image observation. What we want to do is get a patch like this and say, okay, this is the reason this patch in the whole of the image is the reason why the agent is taking the action it is taking. So this patch may be positively impacting it or negatively impacting the chosen action. But regardless, this is the patch which has the most effect on the chosen action. So how do we do this? The basic idea is, let's say we have this image observation here. What we'll do is for a pixel here, for a, for a pixel i comma j, we'll draw a mask. Right, so we'll basically remove this region here, this square region around this. So what we'll do is let's say this image is called I and this mask is called M. What I'm going to do is I'll do I minus M, basically replace all the image pixels where M is true with black pixels. So I'll just replace all of this with black and then I'll add. So in this region, in this M region, I'll add the Gaussian blur of the original image. So this is again a crude crude form of writing what they're doing, but basically we'll first replace this mask and fill this mask with another patch of image, which is the Gaussian blur of the original image. So this MG is basically taking this image patch, original image patch and applies a Gaussian blur over it and then replaces it back into the image. So more formally, this is given in this equation, right? Where this phi is basically the perturbation that is happening. So what we want to do is perturb this image i at pixels i and j. What we'll do is we'll take the original image and we'll remove the mask at i and j. And then we'll add the perturbation which is the Gaussian perturbation given by this AI comma sigma with the mask and then add it to the image. This makes another new image which can be given by I prime. So this I prime would be known as the perturbed image. Now the saliency would be given by this function S. What this function says basically is the difference between I and I prime the, which is the L2 norm here, the difference between this basically constitutes the saliency. Now, if you're trying to compute saliency for an actor, right, which is the policy, then the saliency would be transformed into pi of i minus pi of i prime and then L2 norm of this, right? So basically we're taking the difference between the output of the policy if the original image was given subtracted by the output of the policy if the perturbed image was given. Similarly, if we want to compute saliency information for the critic, right, which basically gives the value function, then you'll do the same thing. You will do value of this current state minus value of the perturbed state and take the L2 norm of it. And this difference basically gives you the saliency information. Then you can do to obtain like a fancy result, what you can do is take the original image i 
and then this saliency information s where each pixel will have some value saying okay this is how important that pixel is and you know, it will probably look like a heat map where some regions are full on highlighted and some regions are not highlighted and then you superimpose this saliency information on i to obtain the final image let's say s of i where it's kind of overlaid so there was the original image like this let's say this this was the original state image and then certain regions of this image would glow because these are the important regions the agent is trying to focus on so an example of this is given by this here let's say in this image from the game pong what we have is there are certain things which are really important to play this game which are these two which is the paddles of the agents and the score information right so what we can see here is that the agent is in fact focusing more on the opponent's paddle and also on the ball right which is the ball that is being used for the pong similarly for a game like breakout what we can see here is that there is some focus on the paddle and there is some focus on the ball right so all of these saliency patches as you can see here signifies the region which was important one interesting thing you can see here in this top part of breakout is that one typical strategy in the game breakout is well all these are all of the tiles and then you have a paddle here and a ball here and you have to basically use the ball to break all the tiles so what one would want to do is open some form of tunnel so that the ball can be inside the tunnel for a long long time and basically break the whole structure from the inside right so that's one of the typical techniques used in breakout and what you can see is that this tunnel information is actually being focused at by the agent so the agent is trying to focus on this region in the hope that it will form a tunnel at that point sometime there are several other examples given in this paper here and one of the other thing that this paper does which is quite interesting is trying to detect this overfit policies right so remember initially when i said that there could be an image like this game of pong and let's say we are giving a hint to the agent right which is encoded in the image itself so here in their experiments this is how they have encoded it so basically what they say is if there are in this case if there are six actions so what we'll do is we'll have six bars and then we'll make one of these bars let's say black and the rest of them stays red and this black bar is the one that the agent should have chosen so this becomes action one if the indexing is from zero so this is the kind of implementation that they have done here as you can see in the overfit case where the agent has been trained for a long long time it actually starts to focus on this region instead of focusing on the rest of the game well it does focus on the other paddles and blah 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 but it is in fact focusing a lot more on this hint instead of actually focusing on the game so this really shows that if there are hints present in the image observation that could directly link the agent and give information about the action or the optimal action in that case then the agent would in fact have a tendency to look at these regions instead of focusing on the original game then they have other examples like ms pacman frostbite and duro and they show certain examples about okay all of these regions are important for the agent and that's why the agent is focusing on them blah 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 and then so to summarize this paper what this paper does is perform certain kinds of perturbations to the original image using the technique of gaussian blur so they replace a mask in the image by the gaussian of the original image which is kind of like perturbing the image a little and then they see how has the value function or how has the policy changed from the initial image i to the new image i prime right and this change is calculated using l2 norm for the desired quantity which could be the policy which could be the value based on which is the entity you're trying to calculate this information for saliency information for and finally 
we obtain this saliency information and one of the ways to visualize it is just simply to overlay the saliency on the original image and then show the overlaid image in order to obtain information about what were the regions the agent was actually focusing on while taking a certain decision. So this was visualizing and understanding Atari agents by Gradanus called Dodge and Fern. I hope you liked my explanation and I'll see you guys next time.